Designers. Hi, Yogi's Curly Rose here, and welcome to another Yogi YouTube channel. And welcome to week two of our yoga chats for National Yoga Month. This week we are talking about yoga myth. So things people believe about yoga that simply aren't true. Hopefully if you've ever thought any of these, this will dispel that. Or if you know anyone who thinks this, you'll have some tools to explain to them why it's not quite right. So first one to go over, I don't like yoga or all styles of yoga are the same. I tried it once and I didn't like it. Not all yoga is the same. And I get it, if yoga is not your thing, that's totally cool. There's a lot of stuff that's not my thing. I don't particularly like going to the gym. You know, I don't like CrossFit, like I get it. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. But to say I went one time, I didn't like it, I'm not doing yoga anymore, is a little bit of a disservice to yourself because there are tons of yoga styles. Most of them are not alike. So if you've just tried it once, you've only tried that yoga. And it could have been a studio you weren't really fond of, maybe you weren't vibing with the teacher and how they were teaching. It could have been that particular yoga style. I mean, there's reasons why maybe that particular class wasn't your thing, but there is a yoga style out there that is. So you don't wanna just say one and done because there's tons of styles that are not alike. They're all taught a little bit differently by the different teachers. So you do wanna make sure that you try few different styles of yoga. You know, if you tried power yoga and you're like, oh, I didn't like that, and you try, you know, three or four or five other power yoga classes, you're like, oh, I really don't like this. Okay, well maybe try yin, maybe try something different, like expand to a different style to really explore whether or not you actually like it or if it's not really your thing. Uh, another yoga myth, it's too easy or it's too hard. That kind of ties into the different styles of yoga again. Maybe there are styles that are a little too easy for you, styles that are a little too hard, but really within any yoga style, there is a spectrum. There is a room to play and room to grow and ways to back off from a pose and say, I'm not there yet, I'm here. And you should have the freedom to be able to work within where you are to make it as easy or as hard as you want it to be. So you shouldn't, be limited to, oh, that's too easy, that's too hard. You should be able to modify the practice so that it fits your needs and your body and what you're looking for and increase or decrease that difficulty level. So again, a little bit with the style, but also within the style, finding the modification to make it you know, easier, hard enough for you. It's not, there's really no such thing as it's too easy or too hard. <laughs> if it's too easy, maybe you haven't really committed to it. I've seen that as well. We're like, oh, it's too easy, but they weren't really in it, they weren't really focused on the practice, they weren't really engaged with the pose, they just kind of did it and thought it was easy, but really they weren't They weren't in it, they weren't really reaping the benefits of what they were doing, so make sure you're not doing that. Um, another big one is I'm not flexible enough to do yoga, uh, that also kind of ties into another one I hear, like, oh, yoga is not for my body type, um, you know, my physical, whatever prevents me from doing yoga, again, that kind of ties into there's the spectrum, there's the modifications. You don't go to yoga because you're flexible. You go to yoga, to, well, for whatever reason you're going to yoga, one of the benefits is to increase flexibility. But you don't have to be flexible to go to yoga. That's not a prerequisite. It's not, I have to be flexible in order to go to this class. That's not at all the case with yoga. You might have to modify some poses. You might have to say, that stretch is too much for me, I'm not there, I'm not that flexible, but you don't have to be that flexible to go and participate and partake and get the benefits of yoga and then increasing your flexibility will come with time as you continue to practice. Um, and then again, and that kind of ties in again to whatever your body type or if you have a physical issue or something that you think prevents you from doing yoga, it's all about modifications. Um, even if, you're, if you think you're in perfect health, you can always modify the pose to fit what you need and to fit what your body is saying. There's poses that I don't think feel good on my body just because of my bone structure and I'm not gonna say, well, I can't do any yoga. I'm gonna modify those poses or I'm not gonna do those poses. It's my practice and it's my body and you're gonna honor that. I want you to do the same thing instead of just dismissing it entirely, seeing how you can modify it to make it fit. Uh, it's just about stretching. No, <laughs> I, there's, there's some styles that are more focused on stretching and relaxation. So that kind of ties back into finding the style you like.
But most yoga is not just about stretching. No, I, I mean, yes, flexibility is a benefit, but strength building is a benefit. Um, you know, working on your core, balance. There's tons of other stuff you're doing in yoga. It's definitely not just about stretching. Um, most poses, even if you think it's about stretching, really you're doing something else like challenging your balance and your core strength and other stuff and breathing and breath work. So don't limit yourself because you think it's just about stretching. It is a great tool for stretching, uh, but that's not all that it is. Um, another one, it's expensive. Um, I need expensive yoga tools and yoga mat and yoga clothes and the studio is really expensive and expenses is it's relative. I mean, honestly. So maybe a studio isn't what you need or is too much for you, but you don't have to go to a studio. I have tons of yoga videos that you can try online. There's other yoga teachers who have online videos. So you can try stuff for free um, or maybe find something that is within your budget. Uh, even if you just go to a yoga event, you know, you don't necessarily have to go to uh, a studio and sign up for their monthly membership, but maybe there are yoga events that are happening in your community. I've seen free yoga events that happen. So trying out some of those options as well, you know, dispelling that it's too expensive, I'm gonna mix it all together. Well, maybe get a little bit more creative, get online, go to some of the events and, and explore and see what you can do in terms of tools and mats and clothes and yeah, there are spendy yoga mats and there are spendy yoga clothes. You don't have to get those. I mean, you go to Target, Walmart, whatever, <laughs> Amazon, whatever you want to do. Find something that's in, in your budget. Really, the purpose of the mat more is to keep you from slipping. So if it's not super high end, you'll still be okay. Um, I just don't want to let that discourage you from actually practicing. Um, I don't have the time is another one that I hear. Uh, again, going to maybe just an event instead of committing to a studio or finding some of the videos online. I mean, mine generally are under 30 minutes. If you can find even five minutes a day to do some yoga, that's going to be a huge amount. That's a huge commitment um, to yourself to improve yourself and your body and your health. So that's still a great thing to do, even if it's just five minutes a day. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily commit to an hour every day to practice. That's you know not at all what we're asking. We're saying, hey, Try it for a little bit, grow it a little, you know, maybe do a class a week at a studio if that's what you prefer, you know, just find what fits with your schedule instead of just dismissing it again altogether. Uh, I also hear a lot, well, you know, I haven't done it before, so I don't want to go to a studio and I'm embarrassed. I'm like, that's too cool. I totally get it. You should still go to a studio if that's how you feel <laughs> and overcome that, but you can start at home again tons of yoga videos online, myself included. So don't let that discourage you or distract you from trying it. Um, yoga is not about, you, you know, what the other people in the class are doing anyway. So you, you should be able to go there fully confident and just there to be open and to learn and to do your practice. Um, last one that I want to talk about is there's a right and a wrong way to do yoga. No. Their yoga has a very long, very complex history, and you will get some people who say, well, that's not real yoga, you're not real, that's not true yoga, that's wrong, that's all bleh, that, none of that's right. There's evolutions of yoga, and there's tons of styles, and yoga has branched out into many different things, but they're all still yoga. So if you found this, this version of it that you like, that vibes with you and your personality and your body, that's great. Do that. Don't let anyone tell you that you're doing it wrong because it's not their version of yoga because that's all nonsense. So don't believe any of that. Um, those are kind of the big ones. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes you feel a lot more comfortable uh, going into a yoga practice and not having all of these yucky myths and non-truths in your head. Next week we're going to talk about tips when you're starting out doing yoga. So be sure you are subscribed to the channel to get notification if that video comes out, when that video comes out. Uh, also get on the League of Nerd Yogi's email list. I have exclusive content waiting for you there. Namaste.